higher. Right, so we're on lesson six now for parametric differentiation. So parametrics is nice. Parametric differentiation is even nicer. You can't really spot it from here, but I always write it as dy by dx is dy by dt, or d theta, divided by dx by dt, and that does the trick. It is just chain rule, because if you look, your dt's for dy by dx, your dt's essentially aren't there. There. And we'd have dx by dt and not dt by dx. So it's just a flip over. Right, so in terms of a plan, this is nice. I just differentiate both and divide them. Diff both. And divide them. Make sure you divide them the right way. If you have to find, if a question asks you for the gradient at a certain point, you can sub the value in before you divide them, or you can sub the value in after you divide them. It makes no odds. Right, so let's have a look. So dx dt will be 4 times by 1 over t, because if you differentiate log t, it's 1 over t. So that's just 4 over t if you combine it. dy by dt, so that's going to be 6 times by 4 lots of e to the 4t, because you differentiate the power stick at the front, so that's what, 6, 12, 24, e to the 4t. So dy by dx is dy dt, which is 24 e to the 4t, all divided by 4 over t. Well, the 24 and the 4 cancel down, the divide by t flips up onto the top. So dy by dx will be, so we've got 6te to the 4t. There. That's quite nice, right? Just differentiate them both, divide them. Part b, to find the gradient when t is 1. So when t is 1, I've got 6 lots of 1, e to the 4 lots of 1. I've just got 6e to the 4. Leaving it as exact, because that's quite nice. There you go. Right, let's have a look at example 2. I reckon this one's going to be a big one. <laughs> uh, so it says, for the curve, so I've got my equations here. Oof, looks like a sine squared plus cos squared. What if it was Cartesian? Uh, find the coordinates where the tangent is parallel to A. Right then. So I'm looking where the tangent has a gradient of 6e to the 4. Oh no, my god, misread that. Stupid, not to part A. To the x-axis, uh, and tangent is parallel to the y-axis. Right, okay. Let's differentiate it first then. So, dx, d theta. Remember, sine goes to cos, goes to minus, sine goes to minus cos. Differentiating. So, dx by d theta is 1. Now minus sine goes to minus cos, so it's minus 2 cos theta. Uh, dy by d theta goes to, the 1 disappears, minus cos goes to plus sine, sine theta. So that says then that dy by dx is dy by d theta, sine theta over 1 minus 2 cos theta. Right then. So I've got an expression for dy by dx. Okay. Let's have a look at A. So if it's parallel to the x-axis, so if you imagine, if the line's going straight across, it's parallel to the x-axis, your gradient is 0. So I'm looking where dy by dx is 0. So I've got sine theta over 1 minus 2. Cos theta is 0. If I multiply by the bottom, I've got sine theta is 0. From my sine graph, I'm doing between... Probably don't tell me where I'm going to. This could be 0 and pi and 2 pi, isn't it, really? So, let's have a look. So, we've got theta is 0. Or pi... And it'll keep on going. Now then, what I need to do, now you've got to remember, that isn't the x and the y value. This is the theta value. There. Right. So I need the coordinates that go with them. So if I look at when theta is 0, 
Hmm. I've got x is 0 minus 2 lots of sine 0. So that is going to be 0. Now look, when theta equals 0 for y, it's 1 minus cos of 0. So cos of 0 is 1, so it's 1 minus 1. So that's 0 there. So that one gives me 0, 0. So I need to find x and y. This question is a little bit too vague in the fact it doesn't tell you where you're looking in the range of values for theta from. If I choose with pi doing a similar thing, I've got pi minus 2 lots of sine pi. Well, pi is 0, so that's just going to be pi. If I've got 1 minus cos of pi, cos of pi is minus 1. I've got 1 minus and minus 1, so that's a 2. And that will keep on going, won't it, forever, because there's no restriction on the on what theta values I'm working with, which there would be in an exam question. We should be sat there all day just working out values. Right now then, this is a tricky bit. If it's parallel to the y-axis, it's going up. If it's parallel to the y-axis, it's going to be divided by zero. It's a bit cheeky, so what I'm saying is, if it's going up, the bottom line is equal to zero not the top line. So if you think if it's if it's a stationary point, if it's parallel to the x-axis, it's your top line that's equal to zero. But if it's parallel to the y-axis, it's your bottom line that's equal to zero. So I've got 1 minus 2 cos theta is zero. So cos theta is a half. So that would give us, ooh, that give us theta is pi over 3 there. But it's not really telling us where else we could go. Uh, the pack has gone for the other value of minus pi over 3. So we'll go with that. Like on a proper exam question, it would tell you where to go, what your values of theta are. There's no real reason why you wouldn't use 2 pi over 3 instead of minus pi over 3 for that second one. So that would lead to, if you find your x and y, That would lead to a pi over 3 minus root 3, comma, a half. And the other point would be minus pi over 3 minus root 3, comma, a half. Like I said, an exam question, it would tell you. It would tell you that theta works for, say, 0 to pi or something like that. So it cuts down the amount of answers you've got. Right, I think that's the... That's that done with some questions to do, so stop there.